Sleep apnea could be tricky because there's more than one underlying cause for sleep apnea. But in this video, you're going to learn about an underlying cause that most people don't know about. And yet we see it as the actual underlying cause for sleep apnea in like 30 to 40% of the cases that we see. But by the end of this video, you're going to be able to run a test at home right now to see if this may be a contributing factor for your sleep apnea. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. The underlying causes for sleep apnea that we hear about the most is that, you know, maybe somebody has a flap that's not flapping correctly or we hear about nutrient deficiencies that may be causing problems with the uh, signaling for your autonomic nervous system that's controlling your breathing. You know, we hear about the connection between cardiovascular disease or high blood pressure and, and type 2 diabetes and, and, and sleep apnea. We hear about maybe someone has excess weight and that extra girth is, is blocking that pathway from the air getting through correctly. Then all these can be valid underlying causes. And if you do feel that excess weight may be contributing to your sleep apnea, then my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, can help you figure out why you might be having trouble losing weight. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'm going to put a link below this video so you can get the whole thing totally for free and that may walk you through that if that's the issue for you. But in this video, the underlying cause that we want to talk about has more to do with your blood chemistry. So the body has a lot of compensatory systems that regulate the blood chemistry. The blood is very important to the body and the body will beg, borrow, and steal from other systems just to keep that blood in line. That's why a person can feel really lousy and they'll go to the doctor and the doctor's like, all right, way to go. Your blood work is perfect. You're a champion. You're in perfect health. And the, the guy's like, well, I, I don't feel like I'm in perfect health. I have gills. I, I'm not supposed to. I feel like I shouldn't have gills. What, what's wrong with me then if my blood work is so great? And what's happening is the body is begging and borrowing and stealing from these other areas to keep the blood in line, which can create a lot of symptoms and problems. But a lot of times those symptoms and problems don't show up in the blood work for a long time. In relation to sleep apnea, this can be a problem because for some folks, the sleep apnea can just be a symptom of one of these compensatory systems. So here's how it works. The blood chemistry, and very specifically the blood pH, has a very narrow range that it has to stay within or we just kind of die. So it's kind of an important thing and the body puts a lot of effort to keeping that blood pH in that range that is acceptable. One of the problems that can occur is that if the blood pH leans too far on the alkaline side, which can happen for a, a variety of reasons, but when the blood leans too far alkaline, what's called the Bohr effect kicks in. And we all learned about the Bohr effect in the eighth grade science class and then we kind of just never mentioned it again. But what this says is when the blood leans too far alkaline, that oxygen can't get down to the tissues where it needs to be. The oxygen gets stuck and trapped in the bloodstream. So your doctor may put a pulse oximeter on your finger and be like, oh man, your oxygen's great, way to go. But the problem is the oxygen can't get down to the tissues where it can be utilized correctly, where it needs to be for the body to function the way that it wants to function. To correct this problem, one of the compensatory or the ways that the body compensates for this issue is to lower the rate at which we breathe. It does this in an effort to hold on to more CO2. So we breathe in oxygen and we exhale CO2. CO2, however, is acidic. So if the blood is leaning too alkaline, the body can lower the rate at which we breathe to hold on to more CO2, keep more CO2 in that bloodstream, which helps acidify the blood and balance out the pH, and then help oxygen get down to the tissues where it needs to do. Way to go, way to go body, way to go for slowing the breath rate so that we can keep more CO2 in the system, balance out the pH, and allow the body to work the way that it has to. The problem is while a person is sleeping, that breath rate can go so low that the person will basically stop breathing momentarily, or at least enough to wake them up or keep them from getting into a deep state of sleep. So this can be a problem with sleep apnea. We see people sometimes that have a breath rate as low as six or seven, which is really low. An optimum range for your breath rate will be about 15 to 18 or 19 breaths per minute. So if someone's blood is leaning too acidic, the body will raise that breath rate in an effort to get rid of more CO2 and get rid of some of that acidity. When it's leaning too alkaline, the body will slow down that breath rate to hold on to more CO2 
and help acidify that bloodstream a little bit. So what you can do right now is you can just get uh, the timer on your iPhone or your smartphone or whatever kind of phone you got and just set it for a minute and then try to rest and breathe normally and count the number of inhales you have in that 60 second period. Don't count inhale as one and exhale as two. You just want to count the inhales. And if that breath rate is lower than 12, that's a really strong sign that your blood may be leaning too far on that alkaline side and it could be a contributing factor for your sleep apnea. If you check your breath rate and it's in that great range of like 14 to 19, then this is probably not a contributing factor. One of these other issues may be causing your sleep apnea. But if you're leaning too far on that alkaline side, you can take steps to improve that and see does it improve your sleep apnea as well. So to learn more about how to do that, go ahead and jump over now and watch our video on understanding the truth about pH balance where we share some steps you can take if your blood is leaning too far on that alkaline side. I can't wait to hear about your results.